today because I have lots of challenges for you to help me with today. The first one is this. I'm going to give you five seconds to think of one word that best describes you. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. I wonder what word you came up with and I wonder if you were to ask those in your house what one word they would use to describe you. Would they come up with the same word that you did. You know, in the Bible, there are lots of words that are used to describe God. Lots of words um, to help us understand a little bit more of what he is like and who he is. And I need your help just now as we think about some of those things. I'm gonna play a song in just a little second and I need you to be my detective because in this song, there are four words that describe God. I wonder how many of those four words that describe God are you able to hear? Listen carefully. <laughs> four words are all really helpful words to help us understand what God is like and who he is. But there's one of those words that we we'll want to think especially about and it's that word rock. This was a word that King David used in the Bible to describe God and especially whenever he had been chased by his enemies and his life was in danger and he recognised that God had protected him. These are words that he wrote about God. And you can read them for yourself in the book of Psalm chapter 18. It says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge. 
See, David recognised that God was his help in that very difficult situation. But the word rock is a little bit of a strange word to describe somebody. So I wonder why David and in other places in the Bible do we read that God is the rock. Let's take a little trip as we think a bit more about that. Well, I have another challenge for you. This time, I want you to think, how would you describe a rock to somebody? If you weren't able to use the word rock and you weren't able to use the word stone, what words would you use to describe it to that person? Maybe you'd use the word hard or strong or unchanging. And you know, as I think about um, what it means that God is the rock, those words are really good to help us to understand. Because you see, God is strong. In fact, the Bible says that he has all power. God is unchanging. The Bible says that what he says, he will do, which means that we can absolutely trust him in every single situation. We can trust his word. But you know, knowing that and knowing what it means that God is the rock, I wonder what we should do about it. You know, in the Bible, we read a story, a story that Jesus told to help us to understand this a little bit better. Jesus was telling this story about two men. These two men, they had something um, in common in that they were both building houses. And as they built those houses, and when the houses were finished, maybe the houses even looked the same. I'm sure people were impressed with what they had done. But as time went on, it became very obvious that these houses were extremely different because storms came, wind came, and one of the houses, well, it just stayed the same. The other house, though, completely collapsed. See, one of those houses was built on rock, and the other house was built on sand. I'm sure that you have guessed that the house that stood firm, the house that didn't change, was the house that was built on the rock because the foundation of the house was steady and secure. Do you know, Jesus wasn't just telling us how we should or where we should build our house. He was talking about something much more. He was teaching us how we should build our lives. You see, those people who hear God's word and just ignore it are very much like the man who built his house in the sand. When difficult times come and hard times come, things get very hard and in many ways fall apart. That person has the same hope as the person who builds their lives on God. The person who builds their lives on God is like the man who built his house on the rock. You know, the same storm came to both houses and storms and difficult times will come to both those who follow God and those who don't. But you know, when you have built your life on God, when God is number one in your life, he will help you and give you strength in those difficult times. How wonderful to know that. How wonderful that we can trust God to be our rock and that he has made it possible for us to have that friendship and that relationship with him through Jesus. But what about those who don't put God as number one? What things might they put their lives um, first in their lives? Do you know sometimes people put money first in their lives and they want to make as much money as they can. They want to have the newest things. But you know money runs out and new things get old very quickly. Sometimes people maybe um, build their lives on having lots and lots of friends and being popular but you know sometimes our friends fall out with us and that can be really difficult it's good to have friends but it's not a good thing to put our friends above god in our lives do you know maybe you even put your maybe you even put how clever you are in front of god you want to be always get top marks in your class and that's a good thing to do but whenever we want that more than following god that's not a good thing god has said that the best way that we can live our lives is to 
build our lives on him, to make him number one in our life. And how wonderful to know that when we do that, that God will help us through difficult times. And how wonderful to know that he will forgive us and that one day we will be with him. That's something that he has promised and we're told that he is unchanging, that he is the rock. And we can be sure that we, if we do that, that we will be with him one day. I wonder maybe we could just pray. You ready to do the prayer drill? P R A Y. Let's try it. Are you ready? P R A Y. Father, we just thank you for the fact that you're the rock, Lord. We thank you and that you're strong and that you're dependable, Lord, and that we can trust you in difficult times. And we just pray that you would help us to understand this in our lives. And those that haven't yet, that they would make you number one in their lives. We pray this in your name. Well, I have one more challenge for you. This challenge is for you to do at home. And what I want you to do is I want you to write out six words that describe who God is or what God is like. Now, you've already had four in today's lesson, so you just have to think of two more. And maybe you could even try, if you're super keen, you could try writing ten words. You can use your Bible to help you. And you can maybe even talk to your brothers and sisters or um, mums and dads and aunties and uncles to come up with that list. And if you come up with a list, I want you to send it to the email address on the screen and get an adult to send it through to us and we will um, send you a little message back. See you next time. Thank you.